Welcome. In this video, we will see deep ground well technique for reducing the grounding resistance of a substation. In last video we seen basic methods for decreasing grounding resistance and slanting grounding electrode. Video's link is available in description box. In this video we will see deep ground well method. Let's see principle of a deep ground well for decreasing the grounding resistance. The key to decreasing the grounding resistance of a substation is changing the soil resistivity around the grounding system because the grounding resistance of a substation is mainly determined by the resistivity of the soil region around the grounding system. The resistivity of soil in nature is decided by the water content and the property and density of the electrolyte solution which has the characteristics of ion conduction. Ordinarily, the resistivity of soil containing much water is small and the resistivity of dry soil is high. Experimental results from clay sample show that its resistivity changes very quickly when the water content is less than 10%. When the water content of the clay sample is 2.5%, its tested resistivity is 1,400 ohm meter, but when its water content increases to 10%, its tested resistivity decreases to 200 ohm meter, and when its water content increases to 25%, its tested resistivity decreases to 15 ohm meter. As we know, if we dig a well in the earth, groundwater will move into the well. Utilizing deep wells, to decrease grounding resistance, is a method which mainly uses deep wells, to change the direction, in which groundwater moves in the soil, surrounding ground rods and uses the gravity water, capillary water, and vaporous water, in the groundwater to increase the humidity, in the soil surrounding ground rods, which decreases the soil resistivity, near the grounding substation, and consequently decreases the grounding resistance of the ground rods. The principle of a well can be explained by figure as shown here. In the soil plane with depth H, the pressure P1 on the side wall of the well is atmospheric pressure and the pressure P2 on a ground water molecule in the soil with depth H is the atmospheric pressure plus the soil pressure. Thus, it is clear. P2 greater than P1. So, the groundwater molecule would move towards the well, due to the pressure difference, then groundwater would accumulate in the well and a big soil region near the well, would fill with water. For this reason, the resistivity of a soil region full of groundwater is low. If we construct a metal tube electrode as the side wall of the water well, then the metal tube electrode has a low grounding resistance. To maintain the pressure difference, in order to lead water into the interior of the metal tube, many small holes must be drilled into the tube. During the process of the groundwater moving towards the well, a drag force would be encountered in the soil. So, the final water level in the well is determined by the balance between the pressure difference and the drag force. This is a dynamic balance process related to the groundwater content. As illustrated in figure, during the field installation of a deep ground well, first a vertical hole is drilled in the soil. Ordinarily, a stainless steel tube or galvanized steel tube is adopted as the ground rod, with a diameter of about 40 mm, and small holes are arranged along the tube for ground water to pass through the tube. The steel tube is then inserted into the drilled hole. A deep ground well is connected by several short steel tubes. Two short tubes are connected together, by a straight fitting and the connecting region is welded as shown in figure. The gap between the side wall of the drilled hole and the steel tube is filled with carbon powder with very low resistivity by pressure. The carbon powder filler has good water absorbability, which can keep itself and the neighboring soil in a humidified state. Further, the carbon powder has a good permeability, and ground water can easily move into the ground well through it. In order to prevent the carbon powder from entering the steel tube, 
A special filtering film is used to cover these permeable holes on the steel tube. Other materials, such as bentonite, can be used to fill the gap between the sidewall of the drilled hole and the steel tube. From the top of the steel tube to the ground is 1M, and a small aeration hole is left to keep the pressure in the well at atmospheric pressure. Let's see the application of a deep ground well in substation. This deep ground well method can be used in an area with ground water. Deep ground wells can be added to meet earthing design requirements, and the lengths of these deep ground wells, can be considered based on soil resistivity report. Diameter and length of electrode can be changed as per design requirements. In general, diameter can be considered in between 40 mm to 100 mm, and length could be 3 m to 25 m or may be higher to meet design requirements. The principle of the deep ground well is to lead ground water towards it, so the deep ground well method can only be used in a region with ground water. If there is no ground water, it can only be considered as a vertical ground rod. Balance techniques to be discussed are Using long vertical ground rods Explosion grounding technique Discussed methods videos link is available in description box Stay tuned, we will discuss these in upcoming videos. Thank you for your attention and time. More stuff coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe.